Okay, so today we are in Nova Scotia, Nova Halifax, Scotia. Nova Scotia, and we're gonna take a quick walk through Africa. Africa. And uh, so, what Hi. is this exhibit? This is a uh, part of Halifax's history. Um, it tells you about a community that was once here that it's no longer here. Um, it was over 400 residents who lived here. Uh, we had over about 400 acres of land, and it's vacant land today. There's nothing there. The city took it all, starting in 1964, which the last resident um, was gone by 1970, January of 1970. And why did they? Um, the take city it? wanted the land back by any means necessary. Uh, they started bulldozing people's homes who refused to leave, and they bulldozed the church down in 1967 in the middle of the night to help the residents get out of the community. So where did they go? They went to different parts of Canada okay. um, and in different outlets within the city. They said that they started building a low-income housing for these residents, but um, doing my homework, I found out that the low income didn't start until 1966, and they were bulldozing in 1964. It's crazy. So we have an exhibit here of all kinds of different things. Yep. We had a school in this community for 70 years. We had a post office for 31 years and we had several little businesses. And this was a community that they stayed in. They didn't want to, it was segregated. That is insane. I didn't even realize that this happened in Halifax, Halifax yes. Nova Scotia in Canada. It's very hidden secret. That's crazy. That's terrible. I'm gonna just go through some of the displays in here. I thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for your time. And we have a nice brochure. A brochure. Here. We were awarded back 2.5 acres in 2010, and we were allowed to put the replica up in 2012. So it's our wow. replica of the, the church and the museum all in one. So. Wow. Very interesting. The city uses it now as an off-leash dog park. Go through that. Thank you for that. Thank you. So the last house in Africville was demolished in January 6, 1970. And there were 80 black families numbering about 400 individuals, as the lady said. So music was very well known. They had a love of music and a casual visit to a neighbor's could easily turn into a marathon of tunes, as they say. It had a musical repu represent, sorry, reputation. There was a hospital. It was built in 1856. It also functioned as a quarantine for immigrants entering into Halifax by sea. And that was in the 1950s. And ironically, I just went to see about how my own mom came to Canada in August 1956. So this would have been around at the time when they came here. It's about the railroad. And this church is from 1849. And the people of Africville made their living in many ways. So they worked on the waterfront with the railways, the factories, the university, and a lot of people even had their own businesses, such as Matilda's Newman General Store, which here is a replica of that.
here's the post office. Africville had its own post, post office and postmark. And the first office opened in the home of the postmaster Anne Mantley from 1936 to 44. And the post office closed in 1967. Here you can help support the Africville Museum. You can scan this, you can donate, you can purchase a book, Comforts of Home. And here's some more credits. Okay.